Hey one, today we're gonna to put on our baker's hat. I'm gonna show you how to make a Turkish bread, a baslama. It is a style of pita bread that's very popular in the Mediterranean. And I'm gonna teach you how to make the perfect baslama bread with my two flip rule. Okay, so right here I have 160 milliliters of milk plus 160 milliliters of water. This liquid here is warm. It's about 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And to this mixture, I'm gonna add 10 grams of instant yeast. Instant yeast, you can add directly into ingredients. You don't need to uh, proof it or bloom it. And to feed the yeast, we're gonna add 10 grams of sugar. I'm just gonna stir it up. Break up uh, any large lumps of yeast. And then next, I'm gonna add 500 grams of all-purpose flour. And finally, drop in eight grams of salt. Okay, and then we start mixing. Okay, if you notice, uh, there is a lot of liquids in this dough. This dough mixture is borderline high hydration. Uh, I know it's a very uh, technical uh, baking term, but basically what it means is that there's a lot of liquids uh, in this dough and you need the liquids because it's gonna help create the steam that's gonna help you lift the bread up and get the space between the breads that makes pita breads so famous. This recipe is gonna make about six Turkish bread, so it's not a big portion. That's why you don't really need to use a uh, stand mixer to make this, uh, not unless you really want to. Now that it's sufficiently mixed, I'm going to knead the dough uh, with my hands. Initially, the dough is going to be slightly sticky, so just keep one hand clean, okay? Just in case you need to answer the phone. You can usually get this done in about, about 10 minutes. And what I like about this recipe is that you can mix everything inside a bowl, and you don't need to use uh, your countertop. Okay, now at this stage, I only needed this for about five minutes and it looks like this. So it's ready. As you can see, it's in one piece. Uh, my bowl is very clean. There's not a lot of flour on the side. So that's a sign that this dough uh, is ready for some oil. You need to add three tablespoons of oil, preferably olive oil. One, two, and three. And then we mix until the oil has completely seeped into the dough. Okay, so after another five minutes of kneading, uh, so total time, it's about 10 minutes. Your dough should resemble like this. And then I'm just going to just tuck and roll underneath the bottom and just form it into a dough ball. Okay, now, as you can see, the surface is not completely smooth. Don't worry about it, okay? It's not a big deal. So pop it down, drop a few teaspoons of oil on top, and just spread it around. Then get a piece of plastic wrap and just cover and proof until it doubles in size. Depending on where you live, it could be 45 minutes up to two hours. For me, because it's so humid uh, and warm, uh, mine should be ready in about 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been about one hour and my bread has doubled in size. Check it out. Just gonna punch it out so that the air comes out just to help deflate it. I'm just gonna form a dough ball uh, just to help take out the air. As you can see, the surface of the dough is much more smoother because the gluten has plenty of time to form. All right, so now it's time to divide up the dough. So this recipe makes about uh, six pieces of bread. So you can just take a knife and just cut down and make six pieces. But for me, I'm just gonna use a digital scale to weigh it and just divide it up. I've done this uh, recipe a lot of times. So I know that each dough is gonna be, have to be about 145 grams. So it's 147 grams, ah, just about right. Doesn't have to be perfect. Once I portion out my dough, I'm just going to form a nice little dough ball and just seal the bottom by just sort of rolling it around like that. So, okay, after portioning out my dough into six pieces, I let it rest for about 
10 minutes. Uh, that's why my, uh, my dough has uh, puffed up like this. So I'm gonna start rolling these out. I'm gonna throw on some flour. Put some on the bottom too. Spread the flour around. Just a little bit of flour, not too much. I'm looking for about 18 centimeters. Try and get it to a as close to a circle as you can do. Uh, if you can't, don't worry about it. Uh, somehow it will sort itself out into a round shape. Yeah, it's about 18 centimeters. So here are the tips for making a Turkish bread successfully the first time. Take out your pan and get it hot and never ever add any oil. Okay, so I heat my pan for about a minute on medium high. So my pan is hot enough. So I'm gonna put in my bread. So here's what you look out for for the first one. When you see some bubbles come up, the first side should take about 10 to 15 seconds uh, for it to just seal up the bottom side. And then you're gonna see some little bubbles forming on top. After about 10 to 15 seconds, go ahead and flip it. And cook the other side for about the same time, 10 to 15 seconds. The reason why it's not fluffing up right now is because it's still kind of porous. Uh, so basically the heat is going to seal up the bread and then you're gonna see is when it's gonna start rising. All right, so now it's 10 to 15 seconds. I'm gonna flip it. And watch, now we're gonna wait until it rises. See, there it goes, it's going. It's rising from the steam, uh, from all the liquids that was in this dough. Okay, so when it rises, I'm gonna flip it. And I'm just gonna cook the other side for just about another five to 10 seconds. Okay, that's done. Oh, it's hot. Be careful because there's a lot of steam in it. It's gonna be very, very hot. So I'm gonna lower my flame just a little bit because my pan is very, very hot. But that's my first Turkish bread. Okay, so for the second piece, I lowered my flame to about a medium heat because my, my pan is plenty hot already. Okay, here it is, check it out. My Turkish bread. Now, like I said, there's plenty of ways to enjoy this. Uh, you can make this into like a breakfast sandwich. Uh, you can use it as a wrap, put ham, cheese, whatever. And I'm gonna show you that signature pocket that the steam created. So you can put all sorts of fillings inside this. Look how soft and fluffy it is. That's why you should never overcook uh, your bread. Now, if only I wish I had some shawarma. Oh, look, shawarma. This is beef shawarma. I made it all by myself, especially this tzatziki sauce. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I made these uh, in a future video. Create a pocket, put in the fillers, my beef shawarma, some tomatoes, plenty of sliced red onions, and just a little bit of carrots because I don't really like carrots. And my homemade tzatziki sauce, plopped it all right in there, yeah. And for some spiciness, I have some sriracha here. Oh, yeah. Check that sandwich out, look at that. Oh, mmm. 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 Whoa. That's some good stuff. <laughs> 